This is episode number 35 of Hebrews in Exile with Rabbi Robert B. Holman Jr. and Sean Appleton. In this episode, Calvin Goolsby joins us to discuss modern-day natural occurrences that the Most High uses in order to get his people to see he is still in control. So if you're into discussing natural occurrences that are happening all over the world, then this episode is for you. All that and more next up on Hebrews in Exile. Let's go. This is Rabbi. You know what? <laughs> I'm going to get you every single time you looked at me. So I have to do it. I have to do it. What? This is this is Rabbi Robert B. Holman Jr. and Sean Appleton. And this is Hebrews, Hebrews in, in Exile. Exile. <laughs> we have with us this evening in our podcast, Calvin Goolsby. And we're going to talk about. The esteemed. We're, yeah, we're, we're, we're going to talk. You know, we're going to talk about some things that are within the parameters of Scripture, but also more germane to the aspect of current events and the Hebrew people. Mm. And, you know, with that being said, uh, we're going to cover some discussion matter that's going to kind of be off, could be off the plantation, but maybe not. Mm -hmm. Particularly as we talk about um, climate change and how climate change has a direct connection to scripture. So before we do that, uh, hey, Calvin, why don't you introduce yourself? Come on, talk to me. Good day, podcast. My name is Calvin Goolsby Jr., a new, I would say, a new member of the FTF, a uh, very good good family uh organization here and teaching on the truth here so stay tuned and buckle on your seatbelts okay we're glad to have you with us yeah likewise i happen to listen to vice president gore it's interesting that he was on um tonight news and the subject matter was the aspect of climate change. The world, not just the nation of the United States, but the world is being overcome with something that is true within the parameters of science and within the parameters of the professionals who deal with this whole aspect of climate change. I heard him say today that the scientists projected when he was vice president that the things that were seen in relationship to climate change would come to bear if we as a nation or as a world didn't do something about it. And of course, um, because it's outside the parameters of, I guess, human minds and concepts to figure out how to deal with it, we took a very um, slow approach to it. So, climate change. The snow caps are the snow. The snow caps are melting. The water is eroding by virtue of something that the Most High said. Aha. And there we have it. And here we have it. And the problem is, is that worldview does not understand 
the mindset of the prophecies that or the words that are spoken by the Most High because the worldview doesn't study Scripture. Mm -hmm. I mean, you and I, we study Scripture. And Scripture... Um, I want to say, I don't want to use the word collides with, but scripture supports current events from a prophetic perspective. And when we talk about prophetic perspective, everybody wants to be spiritual with prophetic perspective, mm -hmm. but you don't have to spiritualize something that the most high has said when it's hitting you right in your face. True. Very but true, you don't yes. know it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't know it. And the other aspect is that you can't. <laughs> All right. See, that's that sinister <laughs> laugh again. <laughs> Too much knowledge behind that laugh. <laughs> what are you Too about much to knowledge do? behind that laugh. <laughs> you can't go to church and get an understanding of it because church your 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 PhD DDDs PhDDs and all those titles that come out of the seminary or the cemetery I call it the cemetery because it's designed yes. to kill you don't have a doggone clue whole what's different going platform on. oh huh? yeah it's huh? more of a, a more of a political thing now so I listened to I listened to Gore talk this evening. One out of three or three out of I forget what the what the ratio he indicated, but he gave a ratio of the numbers of people that are affected by climate change. And the projection at the time when he was vice president and he brought this to the fore was that the events that we're seeing now, we are ahead of time. We're ahead of the forecast. So we're doing better. Huh? Then we're doing better than expected. Is that what he's, that's what he's saying? No, we're not doing better. We're doing worse. You're doing worse. Yeah. Okay. The climate issue is, is advancing faster then, okay. than All they right. projected. Mm-hmm. So, you don't get all the news. They don't, they don't broadcast all the news. You know, you don't hear everything. I, I don't know if you know that um, Australia was on fire. Um, you don't know that a place where it's very cold, Alaska, is on fire. Uh and then you wonder about all these other uh, events that are taking place, um, rainstorms, uh, tornadoes. In very dry places where it's never been weathered, uh, weather has happened like that before. Um, India, Arabia, all those places there, floods, water coming from nowhere out of thin air there's no clouds but water's coming from where so we have to question ourselves um well that brings me to a scripture uh, i want to start with uh which you're seeing um in today's time right now i want to go to bear sheet chapter 15 that would be genesis Ge chapter verse, 15 uh, we'll start at 13 and he said unto Abraham, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge. And afterward shall they come out with great substance. So, um, what I get out of that one as far as also and also the nations whom they shall serve, I will judge. Right now you're seeing judgment on the 
earth right now. Um, Israel has been stretched out on all four corners of this world. Yep. We've touched every piece of this land. Yep. So right now, you're seeing at record numbers at one time, period of time, chaos. The As they call it, the earth is going mad. They want to call it Mother Nature. They want to call it climate changing and all these fancy an terminologies. Of, an act of God. Right. Well, these are, yeah, I would say these are act of most high, most definitely. <laughs> right. um, these are um, what you're seeing. I come to realize what you're seeing right now is the most high's army. Well, hold that point. Can you hold that point for a minute? Just hold that point yeah, for a minute. Yeah, because he does yeah, have quite it. a few. Yeah, yes. hold that point for a minute. Because as you talk about the most high's army, we have to go back in the history book and ask ourselves, what happened in Mitzrayim when the Most High was concerned about redemption of redeeming his people out of slavery and causing them to be free people? What, what, when, you, when, when we look at those, when we look at the 10 plagues, the 10 plagues are indicative of things that are very, very much associated with the Most High's judgment on a land and on a people who have kind of gave him, I'm not trying to be vulgar, but you'll understand this, kind of gave him the finger. Mm. Yes. Yeah, we do not know your your God upon whom which you serve. So, and, and with all that, not let him go. Yeah. And, and with all that, the idea of his army, locusts, lice, hailstone, darkness. Uh, well, you can stop right there. There's it, climate it, change right there. Hailstones <laughs> with, with, uh, with, because I remember doing the teaching on this. And I said that those hailstorm storms can range anywhere from, you know, what we kind of get on oftentimes here in California, these little pea size. Yeah, little pea size. Pieces, pieces yeah. of hail to uh -huh. hail that's gone, you know, and been recorded as being the sizes of a softball. Right. Coming down. Right. And these things are coming down at a speed. If you do the calculation of something falling from the sky at right. a speed on fire. Yes. <laughs> so. <laughs> it's not an. It's not that the Most High hasn't done something radical like that before. Right, 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 right. That's the. Um, that's a good example as far as yes, hailstones. They come in forms of ice and fire, and so you have to just uh, ask yourself a question as uh, people say on here: Why are there so many fires in places where man can't get to? Uh, look at the, uh, there's a fire going on right now. Uh, that's the size of all the fires that's going on in the planet. Uh, the Siberia, uh, forest right now. Siberia? Siberia. Yeah. That thing is blazing right now for about three to four or five months now and is uncontrollable. You can see it from space. The smoke that's going on as we speak right now. Wow. So you have to understand, um, this is uh, called the judgment, which you're seeing right now. This is in uh, climate change. This isn't man-made uh, uh, machines. Uh, you press a button, a big wind and storms coming from space and uh, lasers hitting planet or a piece of the land catching on fire. No, this is uh, what the Mosai said he was going to do. So, so we're really talking about, we're really talking about something that the majority of the world will dismiss. They'll dismiss the idea that the Most High is exacting judgment upon not just the land, but also upon people. Yes. Yes, the people too. Um, as you said, uh, the house of Jacob will be... Uh, also um tried also uh two-thirds of us are not going to make it also um 
just because you're a melanated skin color don't mean you can't get touched also all nations are um are on this earth or will see judgment well i mean we see we see that because one of the things that we have to we have to look at and mm-hmm. understand uh from a from a um i don't know how to how to phrase this from a scientific perspective as well as a human perspective is that two thirds of the world are melanated people. That's very true. Very true. And within the, within the framework of that, of that two thirds of the world that are melanated people, if we look back, if we look back at the historical aspect of the things that have taken place, uh, you can't forget that I forget what year it was that there was a tsunami that hit. Uh, I don't know. Was it India? Hmm. Mm, uh, there was a tsunami that ran up and hit. I hit think one, you're right. Yeah, I hit, think, I you think are it was correct. India. And it wiped oh, no out. Way. It wiped out a whole that a whole was, bunch uh, of people. Nine was that two thousand? Mm-hmm. Yes, 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 yes. These floods are continuing right now. They're not talking about it. You have to look outside your um your city uh news um uh channels there. There's a lot on the internet. Uh there's a lot in your inside your hand. You have to go out there and search for this yourself. Um I started this study uh maybe about a year ago. Um something triggered. I don't know what triggered me to Yeah, I was gonna ask you that. that. Like what 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 sparked to the um, idea to say, you know what, I, I wanna I, Understand it, was, more. it was the teachings when I first came to FTF. Um, uh, There's so much knowledge it was used downloaded into me. I couldn't keep up. And I just stuck on one thing for a while. You know, you said something as far as scriptures. You said something about um, weather or something. I'm all, some just triggered weather. And I'm like, all right, then. And then I started looking at the weather and these tornadoes. I'm like, wait a minute. These are the. These are the most highest army right now. That tornado is an angel. You know, that's, that's, that's a, that's a, that's a servant of the most high, uh, uh, doing this mission. And so, um, I just started studying going on these uh, channels, um, one after another, subscribing to all types of channels on all types of continents of around the world. Australia was, uh, one I, um, really focused on because I was studying about the, um, the aboriginal people over there. And the indigenous people that I was there before when the Europeans came over there and did what they did. If you look up that, the massacre, the destruction they did over there is very sad. And I was just reading a lot of stories over there uh, of what they did. And I'm like, well, that was some of our our people, our ancestors over there. And so I did a personal um, prayer for about 40 days, uh, you know, focused on, um, um, you know, you know, just focus on them. You know, I cried most definitely, shared some tears because I was looking at the vi- uh, the videos, the photos of what they went through, the chains that was on their necks, um, how they were just um, just destroyed with what's happening to the little girls, you know, how they were molested by just all the Europeans that came over to destroy them. The, the, the information is on the Internet there. Um, and so I just focused on that. And all of a sudden, I just start seeing videos on australia being destroyed or flood fires and all that and i start putting two two together i'm like well okay that was our an- that was our ancestors as far as um the children of the ancestors that you know went against the most high they paid their term now we're, we're seeing right now is the people of um the children of those oppressors of our ancestors is their turn as far as judgment right now. You're seeing them going to the judgment. They're losing their homes. They're getting flooded out. They're getting burnt out. If you look at these locations of where all this destruction is, um, the population ratio is predominantly, you know, not us there. It's a higher percentage of the Europeans, you know, there you go. So, uh, we're a very small number there. So, um, you have to take that in perspective too. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's really, eye opening to actually have this kind of conversation because like you said, I mean, it's not a topic that's talked about uh, regularly on a weekly basis mm-hmm. and, and equipping people to understand that is it so hard to believe that the most high 
will use again. We we said it earlier. We're going to table it. Uh, his armies. And I'm thinking of another piece of scripture from one of our major patriarchs. Now, imagine, I want you to put yourself in this position. What would Al Gore say in the time of Noah when the Most High brought in a flood over the entire <laughs> earth? Now, is that climate change? I mean, is it so far-fetched as we as believers in, in the Most High Yahweh, the Elohim and creator of the world? would be able to say, listen, the Most High created the world. Yahweh created it. He can use whatever he wants to use to wipe clean whatever he wants to. I'm using he as a pejorative term because we know that the Most High is not a person. Right. It's a power. But I'm simply saying, you know, there's too many examples that we can continue to, to use to say that the Most High is used not only insects but has used weather and quote unquote climate change <laughs> to get people in line there you go to preserve a group of people i mean speaking of something that dates back to scripture um it hasn't been too long ago that there were pictures of swarms of locusts oh uh, that's right uh even in this united states Yes, that's right. As well as in the continent of Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, so the most, and, and the, I mean, we're not talking about one. We're talking about we're talking about swarms. We're talking about we're talking about. I remember seeing a picture, and I forget when it was. I I, I may have it in my in my file in my library somewhere that, that I might have kept somewhere, but I remember a picture of a swarm of locusts crossing a highway. And it was so dark that the people couldn't drive. Yes, yeah, pitch black. Yes, this, this is true here, and they eat up everything. This was uh, Midwest, most definitely, uh, about six, yes. seven months ago. Yes. And uh, you have to understand, this creates a famine also. So these people back there in those um, areas are are suffering a famine right now. There is um, FEMA out there giving them food because all the cattle what they used to graze on is no longer there. Uh, all the storms and floods back there has washed all the cattle away. Uh, you look on your, um, look at your grocery stores right now, you see the price of meat going up extremely, like each week is going up at least 45 cents each week. You have to pay attention to that each month. So you have to do your research online. Um, these people are being swept away right now. There are so many floods uh, and um, hurricanes right now, the hurricanes in New York, that's unheard of, um, you know, right now, um, the flooding out there, uh, right now there's big flooding out there where the sewage is popping out onto the streets, uh, right now. So you have to understand, um, the most high is, uh, is placing judgment right now. This isn't, um, you just, this isn't climate control. This is, uh, the army of the most high that you're seeing right now. But I think the point, point your question, I'm going to volley this over to you, Rabbi, is why? Why is the Most High doing this? Why? Why? Well, let's look at, we, we go back, we look, we look back on the history book. And when I talk about the history book, I'm talking about scripture. I'm, 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 you know, I'm. <laughs> See there that laugh again. <laughs> the, you know, for most people, the Old Testament is a document that they don't have a handle on or a clue about what is going on, what has been said, what the Most High said, what he said he would do if certain things took place. Mm -hmm. So I look at it not just as a spiritual document, but it is the history book of the actions of the Most High upon those that are righteous uh -huh. and upon those that are not righteous. So the prevailing systemic act is that unrighteousness and wickedness in every case where you read in the history book, the Most High has exacted judgment. All right. Mm hmm. He's exacted judgment. And how has he done that? He's done it. He's done it in a, in a myriad 
in a myriad numbers of ways. Uh, and for the most part, with just what we're talking about now, I mean, you can call it climate change. You can call it whatever you want to call it. But when masses of thousands and thousands of people are dying and, uh, there's no there's no political answer to it. You can't you can't legislate and you can't you can't politicize a response to stop it. Right. 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 Go ahead. Go uh, stop. Stop. Stop that. Stop that hurricane is coming across the coming across the Atlantic into the United States into 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 the uh, exactly. into, into the South Shores of Florida. <laughs> you, go, you go ahead. Legislate something to stop this. You bad. Right. You bad. You some bad. Hey. Mother, shut your mouth. That's right. Hey. Yeah. You can't. You can't stop a a, a force stop, that's been put in place. The, yeah. You 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 go ahead and legislate how to stop the rain and stop the flooding that's causing houses and homes to be devastated and washed away. But back to your point, the most high exacts judgment on wickedness. And he doesn't care whether you're black or white. That is correct. That he exact, is correct. He says, I reign on the just and the unjust alike mm -hmm. no respect of same, so, same belt it same ain't belt. got nothing to do with well i was a good person no <laughs> you know your generation of people have exacted some wickedness upon his people and now what he's doing with this army he's exacting judgment i mean that's all you, it is you, you you take we 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 can go from climate change to covid 19 i don't and how many care I don't care where you try to define it came from. The Most High orchestrated, and what did it do? It went worldwide. And anytime it anything took. goes worldwide, it is the act of the Most High that's causing it to happen. Whether you want to believe it, whether you're an agnostic, whether you're an atheist, whatever you are, you can be whatever you want to be. But history bears out that when there are when there are wicked nations, the most high, and particularly when the nations come against his people, he exacts judgment. And it doesn't make any difference whether you and I think that, oh well, they're not his people. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Uh, you 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 just you keep on believing that. It's right. okay. It's but, all right. Listen, this this is nothing new no. from text. No. You just mentioned COVID-19. Yes. What's okay. So have we seen something like before, like that before in the past, a plague? Sure. Sure. Boils. Yes. What happened in, they, that was one of the plagues in Mitzrayim. If that was modern day times, y'all would be walking around wearing masks, trying to, you know, quarantine because of this, trying to legislate it away. And you have no control. You can't over that. you can't legislate this away. You you know what? You know what? <laughs> you know what? I, I'm 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 gonna say something here. Okay. This is a family family thing, right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to preface where you're getting ready to go. <laughs> when you think about the hurricanes, when you think about the rainstorms, when you think about the fires, when you think about all of these elements are Earthquakes. coming down on humanity at the same time. You're able to record somewhat the number of deaths that have occurred worldwide as a result of mm -hmm. COVID. We can wear masks, we can wash our hands, and if you don't do the things that are going to protect you from catching it, every individual is susceptible to getting that thing sure. worldwide, worldwide. Facts. That's fact. Yes. And there's no legislation 
that you can pass to stop it. No super Zero. dose. Right. No, pill, you're right. You're ab- absolutely. No uh, tenth booster shot. Um, these booster <laughs> shots are getting out of control. Um, the booster shot you need to take is uh, called the Torah. <laughs> Try that for a moment. Well, well I mean, yeah, that's a good yeah, point absolutely. because because you because every time that and and it may sound like this this podcast is taking kind of a uh you know uh, I don't want to use the word morbid um mm-hmm. take on what's happening to the world but consider this you know any time that the most high brings a plague or brings some type of judgment he always protects his people absolutely when noah was in that ark he was protected absolutely when the children of israel were in goshen yeah. they were looking out the window eating popcorn with a half-eaten chicken leg, looking at all the stuff that was going on, had a front row seat to what was going on to those Egyptians. Yeah, boy. They watched it. Yeah. There is safety in the most high. Yes. You know, and, and you know, and and with that, you know, I, I, I want to say that um, the most high, the most high even said <clears throat> that in the exile on all the nations that I'm going to send you, that he said, I will not utterly destroy you. But there are some righteous people that are going to get taken out in these events. I mean, let's look at it. The innocent do are part of that too. When, when the children of Israel went into captivity, Righteous people went into captivity with them and they suffered, they suffered the, suffered along with, with everybody else. And they Mm -hmm. hadn't done anything at all to, to, to warrant this. However, however, that being said, the most high's word says these words, and you've heard me say this over and over again in congregation. He says, I will hide you until my indignation is passed. Sure. Mm-hmm. We are witnessing indignation. And we're witnessing the fact that the Most High has gotten very tired of how his people are being treated, are being treated and have been treated in this exile. He's a good father. Mm-hmm. He's our father. He's our father. Mm -hmm. Sorry, everybody, but Israel is my firstborn son. Mm -hmm. That's what the Most High said. So if the Most High said Israel is my firstborn son, the other guy across the street that we're praying to can't help us because Israel is his firstborn son, and he's the father of all things. And if we want to be protected and we want to be we want to be in a state where where we have uh, covering, then we have to talk to our father. I mean, if listen, 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 <laughs> listen. If the little boy is outside playing and his daddy is in the house and the bully picks on him, when does he run? Runs to his dad. He runs to his daddy. Mm-hmm. Because his daddy is his cover and his protection. There you go. And he knows his daddy going to stand up for him and protect him. Yes. Well, there's going to be some furniture moving. Yes. 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 <laughs> yes. 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 <laughs> and, and, and in light of that, what you just said, <laughs> with this with this climate change <laughs> and all these hurricanes and these storms, there's some furniture being moved. But speaking of, of furniture, you're going to you probably going to talk for an hour after I bring this one up. You mentioned, Calvin, what earthquakes? That's correct. Have we not seen one of those oh, in, in Scripture, too? Oh, man. There yep. was a group of individuals that did not make it that said, you know what? I'm going to come against the Most High's prophet. And the ground opened up. Boy, it did. And swallowed that whole entire group, swallowed a group of them. And then the very next day, swallowed up almost 14,000 of them. Yeah. The Most High will use the earth His against n- you. For those if of you, you come who- against 
yeah. his people. <laughs> yeah. For those of you who don't know, we're talking about a, an, an individual by the name of Korak. Korak. There you yeah. go. It's in, your, it's in scripture. You can go look up Korak and find out what happened to Korak when he came against the Most High and his people and rose up to think he was going to be better and be like what the Most High <laughs> had chosen. He found himself, his family, and everybody else swallowed up in an earthquake and the ground opened up and closed them in and they were no more. They were no more. Excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> excuse me. Excuse me. They did not go to hell. They ceased to exist. Yes, that's right. There you go. There was no suffering, no long term suffering. The ground swallowed up, opened up, swallowed them up, and they were no more. Yeah, the videos on. No, but that's climate change. That is climate change. That is climate change. <laughs> that is, that's a change, that's, all right. That, that's, that, but while it's climate change, it's the most highest judgment. That's right. Yeah. Absolutely. So you can call it whatever you want to call it. Doesn't matter. From a from from a theological perspective, it's the most high's judgment. And guess what? You're not gonna hear anybody with a THD, a THDDD, a DDD, a PDD, <laughs> ABC. or what kind of E uh, from whatever seminary <laughs> ain't going to tell you what we just got through telling you. And guess what? It is all over the scriptures. Absolutely. Yeah. The scriptures, not across the street in the Greek book, but in the the scriptures and don't don't bring me up revelations oh, <laughs> i was boy. gonna go there don't <laughs> bring me up revelation oh, boy. Said, well and if you want to do that if you want to do that then uh i i, I, I i'll <laughs> say this to you mm -hmm. then if revelations is a book that forecasts things to come well, I guess the Messiah has already come because hell storms and everything that's written over there has already, already happened. So, the only yeah. difference is the locusts ain't as big as they said and the horses ain't as big as they said mm -hmm. and the hell storms ain't as big as they said. I can speak good English, but I want to use the word <laughs> ain't right now. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So, I mean, the matter of truth and what happened. So, truth. with that being, with, that, with all this being said, the question now becomes one, you know, what? And here's the question that, that I can hear, I can hear resonating in people's mind. What can we do or what must we do to be saved? Aha. Uh -huh. See, how do I, how do I escape? How do I escape this judgment? Because see, Israel escaped the judgment. Mm -hmm. Noah escaped the judgment. Uh, many times in the history of Israel, even though they were, they were taken captive by the nations, they escaped severe judgment by doing something that was, that would, that would precipitate their deliverance, which was. I remember my situation. I cried out. There you and go. I was, I was and you I was, I was, turned. And I test Shabbat. Repent it. You turn back to the ways of the Most High. I remember saying that. I uh, think uh, one of our members back then asked me, uh, Kevin, he said, um, he said, what did you mean you just bowed down to the Most High? I said, I just bowed down to the Most High. I just, I said, I'm done fighting against you. Um, here you go. Yeah. Take the will. Yeah. Yeah, you're uh, a meek and 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 contrite spirit to turn back to to be pliable enough to get off of your high horse to loosen that pride and say you know what the things that we have been told that have been i've been told that have been done away with are not what did you say what is that 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 play it ain't necessarily so. Where it that ain't come necessarily from? so. <laughs> from Porgy and Bess. Porgy and Bess. <laughs> that is the state of affairs. It ain't Turning necessarily so. Turning back to the ways of the Most High. Teshuvah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That is how you... Now, granted, let me add a little bit to this. And you probably maybe slap my hand for this, but... No, I'm not. <laughs> Mike's open. Turning back to the Most High. Yes. But... That is a lifestyle that you have to accept. You yeah. just can't turn back and say, okay, and then be one of these people in the stands. 
and not get in the game and and do it. Yeah. Yeah. You're on the court. That's, that's why we got back to that point earlier when it says, yeah, granted, two thirds of y'all are not going to make it. You may have accepted the most high, but two thirds of you are not going to make it because you talked about it not too long ago. We said, listen, we are, we did the holy convocations. We are supposed to show up at them. Just saying you were part of the most high's kingdom and not functioning in it is two different things. Can't be a bystander. You have to be a part of the community. So, yes. Yes. I am echoing what you're saying. I'm, I'm talking over you. Go ahead. <laughs> no, don't be a, don't go on court and don't, um, do not, um, play ball, as they say. When you're being put on that court, you've been put on court, the court of the most high, and he gave you a position to play. And right now I'm finding out my position, uh, with the studies here at FTF and um I most uh, definitely uh, reaching out to the the community that's listening uh most definitely um uh follow these two gentlemen here uh most definitely um uh there's we're a only lot here of, to help there's a lot of you lot of information here follow most definitely they're they're following the most high most definitely but follow the most high steady for yourself and uh yes most definitely um Listen, it just goes e- it's easy it's easier that way mm-hmm. it's easier that way this podcast is directed to Hebrews in exile and those of the nations who want to join with Israel. Mm-hmm. Everything that we've been talking about in this podcast today are directed at Hebrew Israel. And it's it's the beginning uh i don't know if it's the beginning or not it's somewhere it's somewhere in the middle towards the end of the of of the of the most high trying to exact an awakening in his people Mm -hmm. listen the nations have to pay for the wickedness that they have exacted up on hebrew israel I don't care where in the world they are. And it, it and it's got nothing to do with Hebrew Israel's righteousness. It has to do with the fact that they are his people. And he understands why we're in exile. And he has he even spoke he spoke these words, he spoke these words to uh in the book of Hosea mm-hmm. to 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 Hebrew Israel. Mm-hmm. He he said, "Look, I know that your idolatry has really caused my fire to blaze up and my anger to blaze up, and I have pronounced some terrible judgment upon you. But then when I look at you, you got to go to Hosea, mm-hmm. I think it's chapter, I think it's chapter 12, I think it's 12, he says, Ephraim, he says, I can't, let you go and Mm. Yehuda I I can't I can't let you I can't let you go either he says I am moved with compassion that all of the judgment that I have pronounced to exact upon you he said I can't do it Mm. so true you got to realize Hebrew Israelites and 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 we we've, we've mentioned this to you before and it's this is just one place in scripture Debarim chapter 28 verses 15 to 68 yeah. that's one place but then you go and go over and read Lamentations and then go over and read Hosea and and see and see what the most high has said about his people and how angry he is that we have subjected ourselves to idolatry here's the sad part mhm Hmm. Lamentations chapter seven or verse five or five verse seven says that we are the product of the doings of our ancestors. And I'm paraphrasing it. Mm -hmm. And they're not here to pay the price, but we are. Right. 
we are. Right. Mm -hmm. And the whole narrative of all that we're talking about tonight and that we've talked about in past podcasts is to cause Hebrew Israel to awaken and turn back to their Elohim. Now, here is the problem that I said is so sad. Mm. And I and I and I kind of paraphrase a quote from from Marcus Garvey. A people who don't know their culture is like are like a people is like a tree without without any roots. Without any roots. Okay. Y'all don't even know you Hebrew Israelites. <laughs> right. Y'all, right. y'all, y'all don't even know. Y'all don't know why. Y'all don't even know why all of these, all of this wickedness has befallen you. You don't know why, and you don't know what to do about it because you don't have a Pied Piper that you trust to tell you the truth, to lead you out. Right. Very true. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, mm-hmm. I, I'm a. I'm a. I'm. I'm. I'm gonna. I'm gonna I'm quote my daddy because I love my daddy. My daddy was a great man, mm-hmm. and my daddy would just happen not to live in the day that I lived. He was of a different generation, and but uh, <laughs> uh, my daddy. My daddy quoted some quotes that you know was that stuck with me down through the line, and my grandpappy too. <laughs> I let it ask. My grandpappy said, <laughs> if it ain't right, it's wrong. Mm-hmm. And my daddy said, it's a poor dog who won't wag his own tail. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to wag my tail. There you go. I, Sh- Sean, we are sounding the alarm to our people. Yes. We are sounding the alarm. And we're sounding an alarm that is that resonates in the foundation of scriptorial truth. We're not spiritualizing anything. That's correct. We're not trying to make you jump up, spin a pail of cotton, run through the house and hoop and holler and oh, won't he do it? No, it's mouth. not about. Listen, if you want to know, won't he do it? Yes, he will bring judgment. Won't he do it? Yes, he will rain down hailstorms. Mm-hmm. Won't he do it? Yes, he will bring locusts. Won't he do it? Yes, he will bring fire. Mm-hmm. Won't he do it? Yes, he will bring he will bring tornadoes. Now, won't he do that? Yeah, absolutely. Now you want to you want to holler about won't he do it? Won't he do that? <laughs> you uh, I, 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 it all. Am I talking too loud in this no, no, I'm, 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 no, you, you there? You see what I'm saying? All right. All eyes have seen yeah. this, and your eyes are closed. Hosea writes, and he says that the Most High said. My people mm. are destroyed for for a the want or mm-hmm. the lack of knowledge, mm-hmm. and that they will not even seek it or acquire it. This podcast, this podcast, is designed solely to reach Hebrew Israelites in exile and those of the nations who want to join with us. And therewith, understand that the only way that you and I survive the Most High's judgment is to teshuva, repent, and turn back to his ways that the people, the Greeks and the Eurocentrics have told you have been done away with. Yeah. So I'm going to ask a question. So (laughs) the covenant of the Most High has been done away with, but you got you got climate change issues that are written in the document that you said is supposed to be done away with. Ah, right. The Most High spoke a covenant in that document, and you're witnessing current events that are happening that come out of that document that the Greeks, the Eurocentrics told you have been done away with, and you bought it hook, line, and sinker. Wake up. Come on, Israel. It's time to wake up. Come on, Israel. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up in all these churches where you are jumping around, spilling the pound of cotton, wearing your white hats and your white dresses and sitting up there taking communion on Sunday, looking like looking like you all holy and you're living like the hell of a demons all week long. And then you expect the most high to sit by and say, OK, I, OK, it's OK. No, he's exacting judgment. Yeah. 
and you will be a casualty of it. Cause yes. it don't, cause listen, he set a time limit on that no walk thing, didn't he? Yeah, he did. He said, listen, it's, there's a flood coming. And um, you need nobody believe nobody be and they were beating on the door <laughs> trying they to were. get in yeah, well, too late up, too late, too late. <laughs> up too to late. the last moment and Israel was inside the boat yes you they go, were preserved was it yes yes Noah was Israel Noah was a was a sign of the predefined Israel that the Most High is going to going to deliver out of all of this madness. He was inside the boat. He was inside the boat. Can I, we don't spiritualize stuff, but can I spiritualize that? You go ahead and take, for your, a second? take your shot. It was called be... an ark, right? Yeah. That it was in. Yeah. And so what do we put in the ark of the testimony? Torah. Torah. What? So, That's not spiritualizing nothing. So I, what I'm, I guess what I'm alluding to is the Most High preserved his word through this person called Noah and his family. Yes. His word was in that ark. In that ark. So, boy, you, boy, you gonna, better, boy, you better <laughs> preach. <laughs> no, you just you, got you, done doing. You, I'm just you, you trying preach. to ride on your coattails. Yeah, no, you got, y'all got me all worked up. <laughs> got me hollering and screaming in no, the mic. No, but see, you know what? Gracious. I think it, it speaks to the, and that's, and that's why you. And this is. I'm glad this came up, Calvin, and I'm glad you came over to talk about this because it's an, it's an aspect of this Hebraic walk that we haven't really delved into, and it's our, only thing that's being conveyed here is our fervor to. Hebrew Israel to let you all understand that not only is the most, the most high is in control of everything and who will use anything at his disposal. Again, pejorative term, his to get you to turn back. You do not want to be on the outside of the ark when that range hits. You want to turn back and testify. And I appreciate, I mean, Thank you. The issue Thank that you, you that you that you've been researching and saying, "Hey, listen, you know, these things are happening yeah, around they, us." Yeah, because you brought up some places that I I didn't I didn't know about was was going on. I mean, fire and rain and places that I I mean I've seen some places, but you mentioned some places the night that I that I that I missed, and I I knew I knew Australia was <laughs> on fire. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's yeah. I, um, I was watching the other day in the country. Um. There was so much rainfall. You just saw the whole mountain slide down onto the village, and just you. How much if, you if you just mm-hmm. no, no, you you see a whole like hill, the side of the mountain hill, just, just you just see a big them out. chunk just break off and just roll down the hill for about three miles. Yeah, when, you know, when you we see kind of, stuff like that. You're just like, wow. You just saw, and it's just roads, houses, trees, power lines, everything, and it's everything, everything in that's in on way. this piece of land is going. You, the mountain the hill's still there, but you're just seeing this massive piece of just. I'll show you the video afterwards. It's, it's you're just like, wow. That's just the most high just taking yeah. his hand, and but you that know, goes to show you about the United States too, because we have kind of this. Dis- disassociation because we don't necessarily see a lot of that. Or what do we get? We get a couple of hurricanes and we get some here in California. Yeah. We get, you There's... know, some earthquakes from time to time, but seeing those kinds of catastrophic disasters, the right. most high is, I almost want to say, you know, the most high has a plan for the United States and the people that are being preserved in it. Yes. So we can either be a beacon for everybody else that's out there. That's what we're trying to do. So we can point and say, listen, look at this example. Look at that example. And if you don't, again, I keep coming back to this thing that the word you brought up. Teshuvah. Yes. Yes. You're going to be a part of this. Teshuvah means to repent turn and turn back to the most, turn back to the most high, not turn back to uh, a person who, who, cannot save you the one who made you is the only one who can save you no alien god no alien god you know in a in a couple of weeks in a couple of weeks uh we're gonna we're, we're gonna talk about um the book the book yeah, yes the book the book, the book mm-hmm. is 
is in process of coming out in defense of the Messiah. And we're, we're going we're gonna to talk about this guy in terms of what Scripture and how Scripture defines, and then you'll understand why it is we're so hard on the subject matter of, under, of, of people repenting and turning back to and praying to the right power. When you talk about God, there are, there are a plethora of gods. But when we talk about it from a Hebraic perspective, we use the term El Elohim, which is, which is the meaning of power, the sole power, the absolute all existent one who made you from the dust of the ground is the only one who can save you and deliver you. Mm. No alien God can do that. And the most high said, he called them. He says, I am, I am the first and I am the last. And before me, there was none and there shall be no alien God after me. That's written in the prophet book of the book of Yeshayahu, which is Isaiah. Hmm. So you need to understand something. The most high has a name. He's not God. Because when you say God, I know. Well, you know, well, we're talking about, well, I know we're talking about this. No, 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 no. He needs to be identified and he needs to stand out front as being the absolute all existent one who also happens to have a name. I ride on the clouds, written in the Psalms. Mm -hmm. I ride on the clouds and I'm known by my name, by Yah, my name. which is the prefix of his whole name, Yahweh, which is written in Bereshit chapter, no, in Shemot, chapter 3, verse 16, when, yeah, when Mashe yep. asked him, mm -hmm. who shall I say sent me? Sent me yeah. It's not written in your King James versions of the Bible. They left it out. I wonder why they left it out. Hmm. Maybe they didn't want you to know the name of the Most High. But in the Hebrew Scripture, it is written in, in Shemot chapter 3, verses 16, beginning in there. It said, he says, who shall I say sent me? Tell him, ye ye, I share it, ye ye, mm -hmm. sent you. Exactly. And then he said, this shall be my name throughout all generations. What's that name? Look it up in the Hebrew. It'll be yod heh vav -Heh, which translates to be yahweh Hey. Hey, I know, I know, I know. Well, I heard it was Yaqua. Oh, I heard it was this and that. It does not matter. <laughs> he has a name. Whether it's Yahweh, Yaqua, Yahuwah, hey, it all fits within the narrative of who the Most High is. Mm -hmm. I don't go around Absolute. calling you, I don't go around calling you Mr. Hey, mister. <laughs> right. I'm praying to Mr. Hayes. Hey, hey, sister. Mrs. Mr. Mrs. <laughs> Mr. Mrs. Mr. You Mr. get a lot how of many, responses. How many Mr. and Mrs. Heads. are there in Mrs. Mrs. are in the world? Right. You get a lot of so heads. when you want to identify someone, you identify them by their name. Mm -hmm. The Most High has a name. And his name is written in the Hebrew scriptures, not in the Greek transliteration of the Hebrew scriptures, which was ordered by the Greeks and is designed to kill you. The Most High said, these words that I'm giving you today, they yeah. are life. life to you. Well, hey. That is correct. Yeah. You know, uh, and this, this has been Hebrews in exile, and our, I'm going to say it once again. The task of this podcast is to help Hebrew Israel and those of you who are searching and realizing that there is some truth that's being left out of the narrative of your understanding. You don't have a pastor to teach you. You don't have a bishop to teach you. You don't have a superintendent to teach you. You don't have a director to teach you. You don't have anywhere to, anyone to teach you. The Most High said that in the last days, I will raise up he, in the Greek text, it goes, it's pastors, but in the Hebrew text, he says, I will raise up Kohanim in the last day to, after mine own heart, to be teachers that will teach you. Well, I'm a Kohanim. Sean is a Kohanim. We teach Torah. 
we teach what the Most High has said. And that's more important than what anybody else has to say. What did my father say? What did the one who created me say? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to ask you a question as we close this podcast tonight. Anything outside that you're hearing that doesn't resonate with what the Most High says, I'm going to ask you a question. Who told you that? Yeah. Who told who told you that that the Hebrew scriptures were old and done away with? Who told you that? Was it Hebrew people or was it Greeks? Ah. And Romans. Who told you that? Hmm. Um <clears throat> I I don't I I I don't like to bring up the terminology of race, but since we function in this world on the basis of race, the most high doesn't, he functions on the basis of nations. But since you function on the basis of race, um, was it black folks that told you that the Old Testament was done away with, or was it white people who told you that? Was it Europeans that told you that? Um, mm. What what commentary, what commentary was that narrative spoken from that permeated the whole wide world was it a commentary that was written by a hebrew israelite or was it a commentary that was written by a eurocentric Mm. Mm -hmm. let me see let me see let me see i have i have in my library i i have in my library a plethora of commentaries and guess what none of them are written by hebrew none None of them are written by hebrew Mm. none of them are written by hebrew that's a head scratcher Matthew Henry's not a Hebrew. Clark's not a Hebrew. Well, we're gonna change that in a couple of weeks. Um, hmm. <laughs> we're gonna change they, that. <laughs> so, so who lied to you? And who are you believing? Mm-hmm. You're mm-hmm. believing the same people that enslaved you, and you will continue to be enslaved as long as you live your life according to that enslaved document. The Most High wrote a document to Hebrew Israel. It starts in Genesis and it ends in Second Chronicles. Mm. Man. Or it starts in Genesis and it ends in math and Malachi, depending upon what you're reading. And finally, you got to get a book that is translated with a Hebraic influence. Well, hey. All right. Man, this, look, I'm going to tell you something. I would tell you to drop that mic, but it, that's an expensive piece of gear over there. But because <laughs> <laughs> that's what needed to happen after you just got done with that. That's well, a mic drop yeah. moment right there. This has been Hebrews in Exile. We've had Calvin Goolsby Jr. with us. This has been Hebrews in Exile. This has been Rabbi Robert B. Holman Jr. and Sean Appleton. And this is, we say to you, Shalom. Shalom.